The Lightroom is the place where you take your photos from good to great. And with these 15 hacks or tips, I am guaranteed that you will learn something new. And trust me, you'll want to stick around till the end because the last hack is a game changer when it comes to sharp images for Instagram. Hello, my name is Martin. I'm a photographer, designer and content creator from Sweden. And I've been editing photos in Lightroom for the last seven to eight years. And this first hack is actually something that I learned well, in the last few days just. And that is that if you press N on your keyboard and then uh, select multiple images, all of them will show up in sort of a gallery view, which is great if you are like working with a set of images and wanna see how they look together, then you can just continually select more and more images and see how they will look together. It's such a great hack and I can't believe I didn't know about it. And tip number two is that you can create virtual copies of your images. And all you have to do is go down to your image and right click and choose create virtual copy. Now you will see that there are two images that are exactly the same. Let's say you have made an edit, but you're not sure if it's what you want. So instead of deleting it, you can make a virtual copy and reset the settings on that one instead. And here you could make a, a second option all right, so for tip number three, we are moving along fast here. <laughs> but that is going to be, uh, if you move down to the tone curve and you wanna do changes to the curve, you will see that the, uh, this little point that you're moving around is moving very fast. So if you wanna do smaller changes and be more precise, you can hold down Alt on Windows or Option on Mac. And when you hold it down, you will see that you are able to do more precise changes to the tone curve. And then for tip number four is going to be another one that is including the Alt or Option button, depending on Windows or Mac. So if we move up to the Basics tab and you hold down Alt or Option while moving one of the sliders, you will see that it turns black. But if you push it, let's say you push the exposure up higher, you will see that some parts are starting to show. And that is when you are starting to clip the white parts. And an extension to this hack or tip is that if you press J on your keyboard, this will do the same. Uh, you could also press up here, these two arrows. But what it does is that it will show both the highlights and the shadows or the dark part, the blacks. If you move uh, the exposure once again, you will see down here in the highlights that it starts to get red when you are clipping the highlights. And it's also going to do the same, but with blue, if you are moving down the exposure too far. And for hack number five, I don't know why I'm saying hack, it's more like tips. Oh well, but for tip number five, it's going to be another one that I actually really like. And that is, if you press Y on your keyboard, you will see the before and after, and which is just nice to have. This is often where I find that I have done either too much or too little in the edit. And an extension to this, if you want to see your image um, more clearly, you can press the L on your keyboard. This will highlight your photo and like um, darken the parts around it. And if you press L once more, it will even black out all the parts around it and you will only see your image. And if you press it one more time, you will go back to normal. Such a great little hack. Since we are already talking about how you view the image, let's move on to hack number six or tip number six. And that is that you can change the background here in Lightroom. So if you just right click here on the gray background part, you can change the background color. So you can have it in white, black, uh, dark gray, dark gray. I personally like to use medium gray as my standard, but then white, it's also something that I use quite often since I post it to Instagram. All right, so we are already at tip number seven. But if I do miss any tips that you think that I should be covering in this video, let me know down in the comments and I will pin your comments so that everyone can read them. But for tip number seven, we are going to take a look at the HSL sliders. And here is a small, super neat little tip for you. And that is if you want to change the color of a specific area or a specific color uh, more specifically, you can go up here to the hue, choose this little pen tool. Now you will have the pen tool selected and you can uh, 
uh, press and hold on a specific color in your photo. So if you press and hold and move the mouse either up, you will see that it moves or it changes color one way. And if you move it down towards the bottom, it will change it to another color. Lightroom is changing both the red and orange slider. And that is because there is both red and orange color in that point that you selected. A bonus tip for you while we are here, that is that if you double click any slider here in Lightroom, it will reset it down to its original value. And now for tip number eight, and that is a time saver that when you are starting a new edit of a new photo, you could actually use one of Lightroom's auto functions that will do the first kind of uh, basic editing for you. So when you open a photo here, you can see it's quite dark. You wanna, you would want to do quite a lot of changes to this photo. But instead of doing all of that yourself, you could press here on this auto button. So what Lightroom does is that it is going to do a color correction for you. So it's going to brighten up the image and make it, well, do changes here in the basic tab. All right, tip number nine is going to be on the crop. So when you are here in the crop function of Lightroom, you can, as you probably already know, choose the aspect ratio here. Uh, so if you want to do four by five, you can do that. Move it to, to get it four by five. You can lock or unlock the aspect ratio. But one thing that most people don't know, you can press O, which will change, what do you call it? Like the viewing box to different modes. So here you can toggle between different modes and I just like them. If I want to frame a photo here in Lightroom, I can toggle between these and have different options. All right, so we are already at tip number 10, I think. And that is going to be to use the rating system in Lightroom. So when you are working in Lightroom, you often have quite a lot of photos down here in this uh, bottom banner. So what I like to do is move like through my photos with just the arrow keys on the keyboard and then if there is one photo that I like I usually rate it with a number between one to five and that will add a star to it so if I find a photo that I think is okay I will give it a one and the better it is the higher rating it will get so let's just give some of these photos some ratings so down here in the bottom right corner you can see that filters are off but if you press it you can choose rated and now you can choose uh, your filter to show photos that has one or more stars. Or you can choose two or more, three or more, or just only the ones that you have rated with a five. This way you will be able to sort through your photos. And this is something that I use every time I edit photos because it's just really nice to be able to sort through your photos. All right, and the next one is going to be to use the spot removal tool. There is always going to be things in your frame that you don't really want there that are just unnecessary and take up attention from the viewer, from the subject to all of these small things that doesn't really need to be in the frame. So by using the spot removal tool, you get this little brush that you can just draw over the parts that you want to remove. And it's actually super simple to use and I personally use it in, on all of my photos. It is quite time consuming, but sometimes there's a bit much to remove and then I don't really feel like the um, spot removal tool in Lightroom is quite enough. Then I just go down here to the photo, right click and go up to edit in, edit in Adobe Photoshop. All right, the next tip is going to be to use the transform tool in Lightroom. So for example, with a photo of a building like this, uh, in architecture photography, like the number one rule is to have straight, horizontal and vertical lines. But when you photograph with a camera, like for this one, for example, I was standing on the ground and photogra photographing a little bit from an angle upwards towards the building. And this leads to the lines you can see here to be a bit not crooked, but they are like not straight. So if you want your photos to be straight, <coughs> you can use the transform tool in Lightroom and you could use these sliders down here. But when it comes to like architecture, for example, you could just use the auto tool. So press the auto button and you can see that Lightroom will take all of those lines and make them straight 
either horizontal or vertical. Speaking of things not being perfect straight out of the camera, we are going to do the next tip, which is going to cover the lens correction tab. And here you have something called remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. And I always check both of those two boxes. And what it does is that Lightroom is going to find in, a met in the metadata what kind of lens you are using, and then it's going to compensate for the, um, the lens imperfections from that specific lens. So in this example, I used the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeters. And as you can see, it removes some kind of fisheye effect and it also brightens up the edges of the frame. But sometimes these um, corrections are a bit too much. Then you can go down to this, these two sliders, the distortion and vignetting, and just uh, bring it down or up if you want to decrease or increase it. And now for tip number 14, which honestly could actually be my favorite of them all. And we are going to talk about masking in Lightroom. And this tool is probably the best tool in Lightroom, in my opinion. And if you press up here on masking, you can see that there are a lot of different kinds of masks we could use. The ones I use the most is like the linear gradient one, where you can just uh, press and drag to draw a linear gradient out. And the red parts that you see are the ones that are going to be affected by when we are sliding the sliders here on the right. But as I said, there are multiple different kinds of masks we can use. That was just the linear one, but you can also do a brush one where you can brush in the parts that you want to affect. And then if there are parts where, you're br where you brush too much, instead of just removing the whole, you could just press Option or Alt on Windows to get a brush with this minus sign. And if you brush with this one, you will remove from the mask. So this is a great way to affect only some parts of the image. But now for the final tip that you have all been waiting for, how to get those sharp images for Instagram. And what I do is that I go down to the detail tab and here you see this sharpening slider. Instead of just uh, dragging up the amount of sharpening, we are also going to go down to the masking slider. Here you want to Press it and hold down Option on Mac or Alt on Windows at the same time. And what is going to happen is that you're going to get this black and white version of your image. And what's happening here is that you are selecting just certain parts of the image that is going to get the sharpening effect. So the white parts are the ones that are going to get sharpened. Here we want to drag the slider quite high so that only the edges get the sharpening effect. This is the hack that makes sure that the photo seems sharp but at the same time doesn't get grainy or looks muddy in the background but we are not finished here because there is one more tip to get those sharp images for instagram and that is in the export tab go down to output sharpening here we will check the box for sharpen four and we'll choose screen. This is just going to give it that extra sharpening. And with that, I hope you learned something today and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.